This is our third video in customizing the GeoGebra worksheet and today we're going to focus on the graphing area which is where the cursor is highlighted here. And just a little bit of review, touch bases here, go to this area and you can see that we have version 4 just to keep you squared away. And let me draw a few dots on here. We've, we've got our point selected up here, our point icon. And let's suppose that you're drawing and you made a mistake and you want to undo it. Very simple to do that. You hold your control key down, press the letter Z. And you can do that as many times as you want to undo it. And if you want a new screen, just go to File and say New. And we don't need any of this right here, so that's fine. And your mouse can select pretty much anything that you want. You can pull down these icons and, and reveal different options on here. But if you press your escape key, then the icon that's highlighted will always go back to the home spot. And that'll keep you out of trouble. All right, let's get started. We're going to customize the graphing area here. And the simplest way to do that is go to Options and Settings. And the last couple of videos we focused on the default area. Today we're going to talk about the graphics area. And you have four tabs here. We're going to start with Basic and it says what's the dimensions of our graphing area and it says the minimum x is negative 4.3 which you can see over here and the maximum x is just about 17. So if I put my cursor here and click and backspace let's just say I want to make this negative 2. Then as soon as I hit my tab key or I move my cursor over here it's automatically updated and the same thing happens on the right hand side. You can choose to show the axes, and you see that that's plural, so they'll both either be there or not. You can change your color if you wish. If you want to make this, uh, let's say, a light blue and just click OK, that's fine. I'm going to put this back the way it was, which I think was black, so we're all set there. And you can come over here for the line style, and you have several choices. And you notice that in this case, uh, on the grid showing we have an arrow and you can have it without the arrow if you want but I would definitely recommend bold because if you're going to print any of your worksheets they'll show up better that way. They'll also look better if you are showing this on an LCD projector in classroom. So that's pretty much it for the basic. Now the x-axis and the y-axis are pretty much the same setup here as you can see. And what's nice about this is you can independently get rid of the x-axis and the y-axis. And if you want to do the positive direction only, that's also a possibility. For distance, one is almost always going to be fine. If you happen to be in an upper level math class, you can use pi or even pi over 2 uh, for trig or calculus, but we're not going to need that today. Now this area called ticks, it's not a small little bug on a dog, but they're actually little marks on the x and y axis. And if you look right here, you can see a little piece of uh, graphing here, and that's called a tick mark. And if you pull this down, you'll notice that you now have tick marks in between the numbers. And if you look very carefully, you can see it. You can change your labels and have alpha and beta and so forth, but we're not going to do that now. And we're going to skip the y-axis because it's pretty much the same. Hopping over to the grid area, you can either show the grid or not, your choice. And the line style, you have various options on here, and you have the color as well. And if you want to print, again, try the bold and see if that works for you. If some of your students in the classroom are having a hard time seeing the grid, you can go ahead and do this with the LCD projector. Now, most of the graphing that we do in elementary school and high school is based on the Cartesian coordinate system. But there are two other choices here. One is isometric and the other is polar. Isometric is very cool because if you have a three-dimensional object and you're trying to draw it on a two-dimensional piece of paper, the isometric representation is definitely the way to go. And it's used a lot in, in art classes. And the third type is called polar graphing. And polar graphing looks like this. I'll move our window out of the way so you get a better look on here. 
And polar graphing is not x and y in two directions. It's really a distance and a direction. If I hold on here and look at that point right there, that point is actually three units from the origin, and it's also 30 degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. So that's just a distance and a direction rather than two distances. And this is used uh, in aeronautics and it's also used in orienteering. So that's a little bit different and that's kind of exciting. You can have some fun with that there too. So we're done with this window. Now we'll go back to the main graphics window and I'll show you a shortcut. If you right click and pick graphics, you can get that same window. So a little shortcut there. But uh, one or two last things I wanted to show you here. And the main one is this thing right here. It says x-axis colon y-axis. And what that means is what's the ratio between the two. And if you look at the, the graph, you'll notice that one centimeter represents the same distance in both directions. But if I click this guy right here, you notice that the y-axis and the x-axis now have the ratio of one to two. And that may be uh, very nice for you, depending on the type of graphing that you're going to do. And of course, we can reverse this to go the other way. And if you get yourself in trouble, just remember that you can always go back to the standard view. It'll always line up just like that. And so those are about five ways that you have to customize the graphing situation. Anything that you can think of, GeoGebra can mostly do this. And I want to finish up here with a quote that's by Paul Holmos, who's written a number of books about mathematics, and two of, his mo two of his more popular ones are Problems for Mathematicians Young and Old, and the second one is I Want to Be a Mathematician. They're somewhat classic books, and he's known for his clarity and conciseness and color. So if you have some time and you want to look up some interesting reading, take a look at Paul Helmos. So uh, after the video here, I'm sure you'll be all set to set up the graphing area in GeoGebra exactly like what you want. So enjoy.